Okay, in this problem, what we're gonna, or in this video, we're gonna start discussing the formal definition um, of what it means for something to be independent. Um, my neighbors just started mowing their yard and weed eating and all this kind of stuff. So hopefully, it's one not distracting to you, and two not distracting to me. So excuse any um, sounds that you may hear. Okay, so as we get started, what it means to be for something to be two independent events is for one to have. Um, to have no impact on the other, okay? So the best example is, is flipping a coin and rolling a die, okay? What you get on the coin has nothing to do with what happens when you, when you roll the dice, okay? So those events are completely independent. One does not, um, so what we find here is that the probability of A given B would be exactly equal to the probability of A. And actually our book extend this, extends this and said the probability of A given B would be the same as the probability of A given not B which is the same as the probability of A. And they would even say, okay, well then that means the probability of B given A would be equal to the probability of B given not A, which is still the probability of B. Okay, so in other words, what we're saying here is B or not B has no impact on what happens with A. Um, so then if this is true, you may remember, let's take this for just a second. Let's take this. Well, okay, hang on, let me take the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. Well, we had said before from our previous video on conditional probability, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B times the probability of B. Remember seeing that from before? We were living in this world and we wanted to know this divided by this whole thing. Okay, so, um, so here's this is now equal to the probability of A. If they're truly independent and B has no impact on what happens with A, then we can say the probability of A given B is this formula, which is equal to that. Well, now notice if I multiply both sides by the probability of B, what I find is the probability of A intersecting B is equal to probability of A times the probability of B. And this is one of those things where we can say if and only if A and B are independent. Okay, so the mistake I've seen over the years from kids is that they will use this formula even if they, if, even if it's not, okay, you can only use the formula if they tell you they're independent, or you can use this formula to check to see if they're independent. But I have seen kids over the years just, oh, this formula always works. No, this formula works when they're independent. So if you know they're independent, then you can use this formula. If this formula is true, then you can therefore conclude that they're independent. Okay, so I have two examples. First one here, um, A, B, and A union B. Well, keep in mind, this is, this is a formula that's always true. The probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their intersection. Okay, go back and watch the previous videos where I talked about this, if that's unclear. Um, so let's just plug in the pieces that we know. A union B is 0.8, A is 0.5, B is 0.6, and then that means, okay, that's point, that's 1.1. So 11 minus 8 is 0.3, right? Okay, so the probability of A intersect B is equal to 0.3. This may not have been approved. Maybe I should have put the formula or the, the variables here and then added and subtracted, whatever, but anyway, sorry. Um, okay, so in order to find out if they're independent, what I need to do, well, the easiest thing to do with this one is to use the fact that the probability of A intersect B has to equal the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, if this is a true statement, then we know that A and B are independent. Well, let's see. We just found that that is 0.3. Is this equal to the probability of A we said was 0.5? The probability of B we said was 0.6. Oh, notice 0.5 times 0.6 is, in fact, 0.3. So yes, A and B are independent. Okay, it's a little bit more, um, well, let's try the other one just in case. So if we wanted to use this one, we need to show that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. If this is true, um, then, then it's also independent. So this would be option one. So at this point, if they say show whether they're independent or not, or determine and you know justify mathematically, this is a sufficient, you're done, okay? If that's what Ivy's looking for, you're done. On this one, 
Um, but you could also do it a different way, okay? So you're not required to do both, or at least I haven't seen that you are, and, um, but you've got choices. So on this one, this is, the, well, we remember the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B is divided by the probability of B, and we're trying to see is that equal to the probability of A. Probability of A intersect B came back here, this is 0.3. The probability of B is 0.6, the probability of A, we said, was 0.5. Sure enough, the 1 half is equal to 1 half, and yes, they're still independent. Okay, this one right here is a little bit more complicated, if I remember correctly. Um, how long is our video? Oh, we can keep going. You're fine. Okay, um, so on this one, our A and B independent, what we want to look at here Oh, you know what? I think they had us find um, the intersection. Uh, anyway. Okay, so, well, already we know that they're not independent um, because we had said before that the probability of B given A needs to match the probability of B given um, not A, and they don't. So already we know the answer is no, but I think this was part, the, this question was like the third part of the, of the overall problem. So I think they asked us to find other things first. Maybe I should go look. Where did this problem come from? I don't know, okay, let's just, let's just play with this. Okay, so we know that the probability of B given A is going to be equal to the probability of their intersection, B intersect A, divided by the probability of A. You're living inside the world of A, you wanna know what the probability is that it's B. So this one we said was one third is equal to the probability of B intersect A, and the probability of A itself is one fourth. So this is being divided by one fourth, so if I multiply by one fourth, then that will cancel, but I have to do it over here. Okay, so the probability of B intersecting with A is equal to one twelfth. On this one, I think it might be helpful to draw a Venn diagram. If this is A and this is B, then the probability of A intersecting B, B and A intersecting, A, B intersecting, this right here is 1 12th. A was 2 fifths. Oh, that's gross. I don't want to add fractions. Okay, I can do it. You shouldn't be afraid. I shouldn't be afraid. What's their common denominator? 60? Um, so 2 fifths is, what, 24 out of 60? minus away 5 out of 60. Oh goodness, so that's 19 over 60. And that part right there. Probability of B given, probability of B given A. You know what, I'm gonna stop this one and I'll go look at the answer key. I forget, I think they wanted this value and then they wanted to know, um, Well, oh, they wanted us to find the probability of B out here. Mm. I don't remember what they wanted us to do first. Okay, sorry that this example got bad. If I think it's important, I'm gonna make another video. If not, um, this may have been the example in the book. So go go look at the book and see if, if I, um, what I'm missing. I, I don't wanna keep digging myself into a hole at this point. So my apologies, and if it's important, I'll make another video.